Tonight at 7 p.m., President Cyril Ramaphosa will deliver the much-anticipated State of the Nation Address at the Cape Town City Hall in the Western Cape. This speech marks a significant turning point in the political, social and economic landscape of the nation as it proves that democracy is still strong in South Africa. Now this comes as, uh, at the time when South Africa is celebrating three decades of a democratic parliament with the sixth administration of legislative term ending with this sauna. Bahai Tsudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this live special broadcast of the State of the Nation Address as we will be having a pre-analysis of the State of the Nation Address with our guests. And speaking of which, joining us right now is our resident political analyst, Sipoma Seho, who's here to tell us about his expectation of uh, the State of the Nation Address, as well as give us some political overview of how things are expected uh, to go. Uh, Sipo, much appreciated for coming in this evening. A big day indeed. Absolutely, and uh, good evening to all the viewers of Soweto TV, and thank you for having me. I mean, you know, Sipo, we've been looking at uh, the uh, commentary that has been coming in, uh, you know, over uh, a period of months now with uh, quite a lot of people uh, you know, not having much hope, uh, if I'm going to put it that way, of anything substance that might come out of the State of the Nation Address. Let's start with your expectations in generally. What do you think is going to be said that is different this time? Absolutely. I think the President is going to reflect on, obviously, this term of office when he started back in 2019. Um, and also he's going to review some of the promises he tried to make which he could not implement uh, in the first year of this term. Um, he's going to also reflect on the last 30 years of uh, this democracy and of course uh, the last five years have been nothing but shocking for all of us as South Africans. We've had so many disasters, we've had COVID, the whole world shut down. I think sometimes we forget how difficult COVID was, mm -hmm. not only for the country but for the world and for individuals. So we've come out of a very dark last couple of years. Uh, we've had uh, issues like, uh, um, you know, those floods that have been really taking many people's lives. We've had the Joburg fire just a, a other couple of weeks ago. So there's been a lot of issues in the last five years that he's gonna probably touch on all of them, if not uh, as, as far back as the last 30 years. I mean, speaking of the last 30 years, I mean, this is an election year. Yeah. Uh, we know that uh, uh, hopefully a date might come out uh, today as some of your colleagues have been saying that, look, uh, we might be having a pronouncement of, 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 of the date in, its, in itself, but we, obviously the gazetting won't happen immediately. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that uh, that's the only thing that, uh, you know, he's going to focus on? I mean, you're talking about the five years of uh, administration of uh, the ruling government but mm. do you think that is is it more going to be the same as what happened in January 8th statement? Absolutely I think he's going to touch on the last um, 30 years on the basis of what he delivered in terms of um, the January 8th statement. Uh, he also didn't want to veer off too much from um, the manifesto review because uh, the manifesto was given to him uh, or by the ANC in 2019. So they reviewed it last year in Soweto. Then the manifesto review had parts of what was covered in the January 8th statement, and it is expected that he will take parts of January 8th statement and add it on tonight. I don't think he's going to pronounce on the date for elections yet. I think politicians are just getting too excited over nothing at this point. I mean, as we can see now, the president is uh, walking in there. We know that the proceedings will begin uh, just at around seven, uh, you know, if there are no disruptions. Absolutely. Uh, as we know, it always happens every year. But, uh, you know, how significant was the uh, latest announcement by the Independent Electoral Commission, particularly looking at the 27 million people that are now on the national uh, 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 you know, uh, voters, uh, voters role there. Um, uh, how important is that? I mean, we've seen low numbers of people mm -hmm. going to the polls. Mm -hmm. uh, how important was that? And then obviously, somewhere, somehow, the president will touch on that also. Absolutely. And congratulations to South Africans for coming out to go and register, uh, particularly young people. I saw a very strong drive from political parties trying to get young people to get involved. Uh, it is time. This year, it's going to be like our 1994. 
Um, and uh, unfortunately, there's just too many parties at this point. Um, so South Africans are going to be confused when they go to the polls. So a lot is going to come out of this year. And uh, I think everybody's going to be shocked by elections results and who will come up at the top. Mm. Let's talk about uh, the state-owned enterprises. Yeah. I mean, over the years we've been hearing the same tune, you know, the same mm. song that uh, we are trying by all means to deal with the issue at ESCOM. We're still trying to deal with the issue at Transnet, uh, you know, SAA, you know, for instance. But it seems like uh, somewhere, somehow, uh, there's no political will to deal with these issues. What seems to be the problem? And then what is it that we need to do? Mm. Is it the root of the IPPs? Is it the one that we need to, as a country, do we really need to uh, also just appoint, you know, just people that are not politically aligned, mm. people who have got uh, the, ne the necessary expertise? What do you think needs to be done? And what is this, the, the problem? I think uh, the, the biggest bulk of the problem is that uh, obviously the deployment happens at Lutuli House. Um, a lot of the government deployments at national level will happen at Lutuli House. A lot of um, the provincial appointments at different provinces will happen at the provincial leadership offices. So, and, and the same goes for at the regions. So, um, the issue of deployment happens at a region, at a province and at a national scale. So, um, when you look at those MOEs and who serves on them, whether you're looking at uh, local government or at uh, province or at national, it's always the appointments that are being done at the ANC offices. Um, I think that's a, that's a big challenge because it's not always fair. We don't always pick the best out of uh, what the industry has to offer in terms of particular skills, whether you're looking at CFOs, city managers, people with really high skills to manage complex matters in SOEs or any municipal owned entities. So there's a lack of really strong skilled people from war different walks of life. It does not necessarily always have to be just Botaki, black people. Mm. There are colored people, there are Indian people who are uh, completely, co uh, who can do the job. There are white people that can do the job, white young South Africans who are who are really capable, who don't find expression in government. So th there needs to be a wider representation of all different South Africans in government. Sipo Masiho, I'm going to let you go now. Yeah. Uh, I know that we will talk about, uh, you know, post the speech, uh, just to highlight a few things that the president would have uh, spoken about. But much appreciated for coming this evening. Absolutely. That was uh, political analyst uh, Sipo Masiho there, just uh, giving us, uh, you know, what are the expectations uh, particularly as we know that uh, the president will deliver the sauna at 7 p.m. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, we continue the conversation with uh, Baselaya Lezo, who is an economist, just to touch on the economic aspect of things, particularly as the president will deliver the State of the Nation address. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto TV News. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. This is uh, the live uh, State of the Nation Address special broadcast. Uh, we are coming to you live this evening as we are looking at the um, speech that's going to be delivered by President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa there. Now, to look at the economic perspective of uh, all things, as we know that the President will also touch on various things that are related to the economy. Let me bring in uh, my guest, uh, who is an economist, that's uh, Vasile Alezo, who's joining us in studio this evening. Uh, Mr. Alezo, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. The honor is all mine, and uh, good evening to the listeners as well. Much appreciated. I mean, you know, uh, earlier on when I was speaking to Sipo, we touched on various issues, particularly looking at the SOEs uh, and stuff. Um, I, I, I want us to, you know, look at um, what is it that we can expect, particularly economically, that the president might touch on? But, you know, we're seeing struggling SOEs. The economy is also not doing well. Uh, are there any policy, you know, promises or, or, or things that uh, can assure investors that the president will definitely outline during this honor? Definitely, the president is forced to act in this regard. Remember, France Net is having endless problems. They cannot move the cargo and they need a bailout out of about 47 billion rands. And if they don't do that, 
um, Transnet will not continue to play the strategic role that it ought to play. So as much as it is a disappointment, it will be a disappointment for us as South Africans because we continue to bail out all these state-owned entities. ESCOM still needs money as well or a bailout of some sort, but Transnet is a strategic um, um, entity that needs to be taken care of urgently. Mm. Do you think we'll be able to resolve, I mean, there will be a sound uh, assurance when it comes to the issue of electricity. I mean, the uh, electricity minister last year, 2023, he's been saying that, look, we're going to resolve the issue at least by December. We're in February now. Uh, what, what seems to be the problem? I guess when it comes to electricity, in fact, all the state-owned entities, I think the ruling party has dismally failed in terms of managing the state-owned entities. ESCOM is a classical example. They are not going to be able to resolve this electricity problem, not anytime soon. Transnet, they are not going to be able to resolve it anytime soon because it needs a longer term investment, but also it needs a strategic thinking. But I think for now, what they will be able to do is to bail it out and then deal with the minor issues that Transnet can urgently deal with. Otherwise, our economy will continue to be in trouble. I mean, I want us now to talk about the issue of the social grants. I mean, there's a debate going around whether or not government should implement, you know, a permanent form of targeted income support grant for unemployed citizens. And uh, I mean, in your opinion, uh, should government maybe not try to move away from this grant regime, uh, if I may put it that way, at a large scale and come up with solid plans that will be able to assist, you know, ordinary South Africans. We know that the uh, household basket, it's just over 5,000. And you look at the minimum um, again, the minimum uh, 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 income grant, not actually in income grant, the minimum wage, it's around, uh, you know, 27 rands now. Uh, so which means if you, you, you look at the whole month, it will be around 4,000 something. It's still below the household uh, basket there. Do you think also that they will try by all means just to address these issues? Because now South Africans can barely survive. Uh, government, I think they will continue to offer social grants. However, that is not sustainable. Let's just look at the figures. Mm -hmm. The people who contribute into the tax, particularly personal income tax, are 5.2 million. The people who are on social grants are between 18.6 million, closer to 19 million, and that is not sustainable. You rather have more people employed than to have more people on social grants. And if you don't resolve that, it will exacerbate the problem of income inequality or the inequality that we have in South Africa. So it is not sustainable. Government should rather find a long-term objective or long-term view in terms of um, uh, reducing unemployment so that we've got more people who are employed rather than people who are on social grants. This model of social grants is unsustainable and it's unaffordable for the economy because social grants per month are around 22 billion per month. Over a year, they cost close to 200 billion. Mm. So you rather have an income tax base. The income tax base in South Africa is showing it because a number of people are unemployed, some have lost jobs, and that in the long term reduces the income of the country and hence we've got so many people on social grants. So it's not sustainable. Mm. A long term commitment or a long term strategic decision has to be made in terms of increasing employment in order to reduce the people who are on social grants. I mean, Basel, according to reports, the rand has lost, uh, you know, uh, over 50% of its value against the dollar over the past decade uh, or so. Uh, I mean, some economists, you know, uh, see that, uh, you know, maybe there is hope for the currency this year. We've seen a lot of fluctuations when it comes to, uh, you know, the rent performance. It was doing good and then, then it doesn't do good again. Um, what do you think also needs to be done? I mean, you look at just recently the saga of the rent manipulation. There's quite a lot of issues that have been happening, you know, uh, behind, if I may put it that way. Um, what do you think uh, needs to happen in order to get the rent out there and then also make sure that uh, we've got a stable and a, 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 a stable economy, if I may put it there? Okay, so the currency generally loses if it's, its value, if one, you don't have policy certainty. Two, if you've got inefficiencies like we have, forget about strengthening our, 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 our currency. But also on the other side, the inefficiencies that we have 
will not assist in terms of strengthening the currency. However, as a country, we should be benefiting even in that negative scenario. If we were exporting a lot of goods, it was going to be an advantage for us, but we are importing a lot of goods, and hence our currency will continue to dwindle or our currency will continue to lose value. So the best ways for me, um, which are easy to manage, is for the ruling party to have a policy certainty, be efficient in managing state-owned entities, but also on the other side, grow the economy, and uh, do a lot of exports, and then our currency, over time, will gain strength. But in the short run, you will not be able to boost the currency unless you do the basics right. Let me also remind our viewers that, uh, you know, we are taking the State of the Nation address live uh, for you just at the top of the hour there. You can see uh, our visuals there. The Deputy President that uh, uh, Paul Mashatile, they're just walking in at the Cape Town City Hall. I can see the uh, deputy speaker also just coming in uh, there we will keeping we will be keeping you updated with uh, uh, things uh, that are unfolding there at the Cape Town City Hall in the Western Cape well Basila before I let you go I mean uh, I, I want us to look at uh, you know how we can uh, try to for instance, uh, get a sense of what the president might say to get the investors back. Because there's been talk that the investors are fleeing the country because of uh, lack of uh, you know, sound policies in the country. Do you think that uh, the president will touch on that, uh, you know, assuring investors internationally that uh, South Africa is open for business and they must come and invest, even though we are facing quite a lot of issues? Certainly the president will have to touch on that, but I think the biggest problem though is uh, the president will not give us anything new. He will talk about reducing corruption, increasing economy and stuff like that, but the biggest failure for me has been the implementation. So whatever he has promised over the past seven years, I think the, the, the reality and the implementation has been very, very slow and hence a lot of people are losing hope. And if you don't deal with electricity, you don't deal with the crime, you don't deal um, um, with some of the challenges, the crime that we have in South Africa, which is too much, and poor inefficiency on state-owned entities, you're most likely not to make any improvement. He will touch on that, but uh, it remains to be seen if that will be implemented. So far, he has really dismally failed in terms of implementing all the good reforms that he has spoken of. Basela Yelezo, much appreciated for coming. I hope that we're going to be speaking as soon as the uh, sauna is, 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 is delivered. Uh, so I uh, thank you very much for coming so in much. this evening. So much. much appreciated. That is uh, Basela uh, Yelezo, who is an economist. As you can see, uh, the live visuals there from uh, Cape Town City Hall. Uh, the president will deliver the speech uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so if there are no disruptions there because we've been hearing uh, you know some political parties saying that look we will not let the president speak until we get our issues out there but we will we will uh, keep you updated as uh, this unfolds let's take a quick ad break when we come back uh, we continue the conversation do stay with us Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We are almost at the end of the special broadcast of the State of the Nation Address. Uh, and right now we're joined by Kiamu Hetsui Masika, who is a youth activist, uh, also a student activist in his own right there. He's here to, you know, as the mouthpiece of the youth of the country and to give us his expectations, particularly in regards to issues of employment as well as uh, tertiary education among young people. Come here, it's much appreciated for coming in uh, this evening. Always a pleasure. No, thank you, Tabu, and thank you for having us. Um, I mean, you've been very, very vocal, particularly yes. on student matters. You yes. know, we know that uh, on this platform, you know, you've highlighted all the challenges that young people are facing at various tertiary institutions. Yes. What is it that you're hoping that the president will address, particularly as far as uh, students concerned? Oh, well, uh, look, uh, the president must not use today's sauna as an election manifesto. Uh, but I think the president must rigorously address uh, the fact that uh, the state of our education in the country is in a state of a crisis. 
uh, the minister has chosen to take that office and use it as a, as, as a retirement uh, village. Uh, and this, of course, is precisely informed by the fact that uh, we've been having challenges. Uh, black students are still finding it difficult to access education. Uh, we've highlighted the issue of privileges where you find that uh, there's a, a battle between IEP and Umalusi mm. uh, in terms of uh, our curriculum. Uh, so that, of course, uh, are some of the issues that uh, we'd hope that the president rigorously addresses uh, because uh, it is not a secret that uh, white students uh, or white people uh, get privileges. They get to be selected, accepted first in institutions of higher learning. They get to uh, go to cafeterias being uh, the first. They don't stand in queues. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, I was having actually an, 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 a discussion uh, with one of my colleagues who used to work uh, at the registrar's environment. And he cited that uh, he worked in that department and he has never seen uh, a surname of a white person being accepted in that system. So we've questioned that uh, where do they apply? Uh, how are these applications being processed? And all of that. So we want uh, the president to, to, to robustly address the, the inequalities uh, in the state of higher education. Of course, the collapsing NESFAS uh, that uh, you know uh, has excluded a lot of black students, uh, denied them access to higher, uh, to, to higher education. And it is very unfortunate that the president is presiding over the state uh, in a tenor where many uh, students have been defunded. As we speak, students are defunded in their majority. Many of these kids can't register, they're blocked, they're historically indebted. Universities are imposing uh, money uh, you know, uh, as a means uh, of, uh, you know, so we're having a lot of challenges and uh, we do hope that uh, the minister, uh, the president, I mean to say, must also pass a motion of no confidence against the minister because we are very consistent on that uh, without any fear of contradiction. Uh, we believe that the minister's time uh, as a minister of education has collapsed uh, and he must, uh, you know, excuse himself in that uh, a seat of responsibility uh, and uh, someone else uh, with uh, capacity uh, must then take that responsibility to address the issues that uh, black students are facing across the country. Mm. Let me remind our viewers that as you can see those are live visuals from uh, Cape Town City Hall and the Western Cape where the State of the Nation address is expected uh, to take place uh, probably in the next uh, few in the next uh, uh, few, 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 few minutes, minutes, as we can see now, the president is saluting, saluting the guard there alongside uh, the speaker of parliament. Uh, that uh, uh, that uh, the uh, speaker of parliament, Nosivu Mapis and Mapula, also just uh, uh, behind the president. There.
There is uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa there saluting the garden, uh, the singing of the national anthem. I believe that uh, they will be heading uh, to the chambers now to, to deliver the State of the Nation address there. But my guest uh, this evening is uh, Kiamo Hetsumasika, who is a youth and education activist, still joining me in studio. Kiamo Hetsu, I mean, we've seen quiet videos that are disturbing mm. of, um, you know, primary school children in KZN in other places mm. that are rural. Mm. Uh, you would see them crossing mm. uh, those uh, rivers uh, mm. by foot. Uh, trying to access that education that they mm. need. I mean, mm. what what do you think mm. is the country doing wrong? I mean, we've been seeing these pictures mm. uh, over the past time, I'm not sure, since 1994. Yeah. Look, the liberation movement has failed the people of South Africa. It's not a secret. Uh, you know, people have lost hope in the liberation movement uh, because for the past eight years, we've been singing the same tune, uh, the same song that uh, has lost tune. Uh, you know, speaking about the state of these schools, and we were having a discussion that uh, you know it is it 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 is very unfortunate that uh, when we got power uh, in 1994, given all necessary tools, political tools, to change the state of this country, uh, politicians saw it fit to take that money uh, 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 to serve uh, uh, their personal interests. And uh, look, we still maintain that. Had we had a responsible state that could have used those resources, utilized them uh, to improve the infrastructure, the dilapidating infrastructure in these schools, improve uh, the facilities of those schools, we could have been in a better place today. So it is very unfortunate that uh, you know we even run away from this responsibility where uh, we go to these wide schools and we see no need of going back to the community to contribute. Uh, in the building uh, uh, of these of, of, of these schools, we all want to run to these white uh, uh, semi uh, schools uh, that uh, you know are categorized as better schools, uh, and yet our schools in our communities are dilapidating, and no one is taking uh, full accountability. Of Welcome back. You're still watching the special broadcast of the State of the Nation Address. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. We are about to wrap up the conversation. I'm bringing in my guest again, uh, that's Kamahetu Masika, who is an education and youth activist joining us in studio now just to reflect on uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa's State of the Nation Address. Uh, Kamahetu, much appreciated for coming in again. Um, look, man. Um, the president touched on various issues uh, during the State of the Nation address. Let me get your reaction. Does the speech by the president inspire confidence? This is one of the longest boring speeches I've ever had. Uh, the president has spent two hours reading an obituary uh, of his late friend and not really citing the struggles that uh, are affecting South Africans. I think South Africans are seated at home now uh, waiting patiently to listen to how is the president intending on uh, dealing with uh, some of these issues that affect them on a daily basis. I think this is just a copy and paste uh, of, a, the, of a state of a nation address because whatever that the president is saying now, he has said it uh, two years ago, five years ago. The issues of corruption are not new issues. The issues of people stealing state resources to pursue their personal things. It's not something new that, uh, you know, uh, emerges today. These are some of the realities that uh, we've been exposed to as South Africans. The issue of load shading, uh, it's not something new. So I don't really think that the president is inspiring confidence because I was sleeping uh, as in when he was addressing the, uh, uh, the country, uh, speaking about some of these issues. Uh, I always, I, I was sleeping, literally I was sleeping, and he, he never even spoke about issues uh, that p pertain uh, our sector, the higher education sector, of which uh, that is where I was eagerly waiting to hear what uh, the president uh, was going to, you know, because we've been pleading for his intervention, uh, you know, we've written to his office uh, requesting that, uh, you know, uh, the minister must be put uh, on special leave uh, while uh, there's an independent assessor uh, who will deal with issues of higher education. So I think this is just one of those speeches. Mm. 
I mean, he, just boring. He, he also touched on the issue of the presidential youth intervention program, uh, the one that they've been hiring quite a lot of young people there, uh, saying that, uh, look, uh, 1.6 million young people have secured opportunities via yeah. this program, saying that most of them now, at least, you know, they are working. Uh, do you think that such initiatives are the ones that we need in order to deal with the unemployment crisis in the, the country? The NYTA has collapsed. Young people don't resonate with the, the, the NYTA. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, why is unemployment uh, uh, so high in this country? Over 16, young, 16 million young people of South Africa are unemployed. Uh, and you know, those are some of the pending issues that uh, you know, the president was supposed to rigor rigorously address. You know, he's just citing unemployment as if he's just reading a poem, you know, and he's not really, you know, giving us practical solutions as to where, how and when is this issue going to be resolved. You know, we have the highest level of graduate unemployment in South Africa, you know, where many of our graduates who have graduated with cum laude are just given internships. These internships are not sustainable. You know, so the president is not really inspiring confidence. Actually, this is just one of those boring speeches that I've ever had. What uh, do you think of, uh, of of Enesfas in its entirety? Do you think that he should have touched on, uh, you know, uh, the plans moving forward in addressing the concerns? We know that Enesfas had promised that they will pay the allocations that are still outstanding by the end of January. It has not happened uh, yet. Uh, do you think that he should have? Uh, you know, assured young people out there that there will be a complete mm. overhaul of NSFAS and then things will get back to normal. Of course, NSFAS is the only hope of black students in South Africa. The president was supposed to, you know, uh, give a way forward on what is to be done uh, because we still fail to understand the budget cut of 13 billion uh, from uh, higher education uh, funding as to why would you then subtract uh, 13 billion uh, of money uh, that is supposed to assist the poor and the vulnerable because we fought for free education, we fought for access to education and the president is not really citing. Students have lost hope, uh, you know, uh, to the president of the country because, you know, uh, they go to institutes of higher learning seeking for, 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 for better opportunities and when they are listening to the president, the president is not really uh, touching on those issues. So. I think the president must also desist from factional speeches uh, because I think uh, this speech, if you pay more attention to it, the president was factional. Uh, he was addressing the country's uh, problems in a factional way. This is not uh, a time of factionalism, political factionalism. South Africans need solutions to their issues. South Africans need solutions to unemployment. South Africans need uh, solutions to poverty, malnutrition uh, and all of that. Just before I let you go, uh, Kamahetsui, I mean, he touched on also the issue of, uh, you know, over the years they have uh, introduced the national student, I mean, uh, the national, uh, uh, the NSNP program, which is the feeding scheme program uh, at, at various schools, like on, from the basic education department, whereby young people, uh, learners, they are able to eat during break and, mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, they're saying that also they will build more schools as a country. What do you think needs to happen, just lastly before I let you go, uh, from the uh, basic education's perspective, also looking at uh, the quality of education that our uh, young people are getting? You know those tenders, uh, it's unfortunate, my brother, because we're in touch with the realities of these communities. Uh, and to a certain extent, we've went an extra mile of looking for external resources uh, such that uh, we are then able to mitigate around those challenges. Feeding schemes have collapsed uh, in basic education schools. Uh, students are starving, learners are starving, there's no food. Uh, and uh, politicians themselves uh, have put their hands uh, in these tender processes that uh, are supposed to be assisting black students to get mal a, 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 a nutrition in basic schools. So. There's no food. Uh, the president, of course, this is a good intervention because you'd understand that some of these kids travel as far as, you know, uh, from different parts of this country. They live home hungry and they come back home hungry. But of course, hoping that when they get to school, 
uh, they'll get a proper meal, a decent meal, but unfortunately when they get to school, there's no food. So that's the reality, there's no food uh, in, 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 in basic schools and that's the honest truth. And I do not think that the president is really in touch uh, with issues that uh, affect black students. And I can tell you my brother, uh, it is not yet Uhuru, the struggle continues. Masike, much appreciated for coming. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Tawo. Thank you. Thank you Education very much. activist uh, and youth activist Kamahetu Masike, they're just giving us his perspective after the president uh, delivered the State of the Nation address uh, there in Cape Town. Uh, we know he spoke about quite various issues there state capture, July unrest, floods, electricity issues, the economy. Uh, saying that uh, you know they have appointed capable people in various roles you know in efforts to have credibility and efficiency uh, at those uh, state-owned enterprises let me thank my earlier guest there uh, Basela Yalezo who's an economist also just giving us the economic perspective there Sipo Masiho political analyst uh, that's our resident political analyst also just uh, giving us his sense of uh, you know what uh, transpired. I mean, what he was hoping that the president was going to talk about. There, you know, mixed reviews on uh, the president's uh, speech there. But we hope that uh, uh, you know the conversation will continue on various social media platforms uh, here at uh, Soweto TV. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. Now, remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode simply send us an email it's over to today at so to tv.co.za alternatively you can call us or whatsapp us at 081 from myself and the rest of the team good night and thank you for watching